Huge announcement from Lumix today. That's right, you heard it. Not only are we getting two new cameras, but both of those cameras have something we've been asking for forever and we thought we'd never see it on a Lumix camera. We're getting phase detect autofocus. My name's Todd White with Precision Camera and Video. I'm also a Lumix Global Ambassador. Let's jump right in. All right, so we're getting two new cameras from Lumix, the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. Both of those cameras are available for pre-order at this time. Down in the description below, you'll find those links. The S5 Mark II will be available by the end of the month and we'll start seeing that. And then the S5 Mark II X, we do not have an exact date for that as of yet. Let me go ahead and start off by going through the new and improved features that we're gonna find on both of these cameras. And then when we get to the end of that list, these are gonna be baseline features. Then I'll talk about a few things additional that we're gonna get with the S5 Mark II X. Now we've already mentioned one of the primary features that we're gonna get with these new cameras is the phase autofocus. However, one point to bring up, in the DFD autofocusing system, we had about 315 autofocus points on those sensors. With the phase autofocus, now we're gonna have 779 autofocus points on that sensor, which is a brand new sensor which supports the phase autofocus. This brand new sensor is 24.2 megapixels and will give us approximately 14 plus stops of dynamic range, just like we saw with the original S5, but it's a brand new sensor. Also with this, we have a brand new processing engine as well. It's the L2 engine, and this particular engine will be twice as fast with signal processing. Another new feature that we're getting is gonna be the Active IS. Now we know that Lumix has already some of the best image stabilization in the industry with their dual IS2, and now we have Active IS. And Active IS basically is gonna be sensing the camera movement and making the adjustments as needed. So we're still gonna have the same adjustments that we have currently, but it's just gonna be an extra step of image stabilization for us. The main areas that we're gonna notice this are gonna be like in the walking and talking, kind of the vlog style scenario. We'll see that be a little bit smoother and also some of those side to side movements as well. One of the big things I saw people complaining about online was gonna be the size of the HDMI port that we had on the S5. Guess what? We've got full size HDMI on the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. Also, an improved EVF. We're gonna to go to 3.68 million dots on the EVF. We also were gonna get unlimited recording, 422 10-bit up to 60 frames a second in Cinema 4K and in 4K. And if you're a fan of using the SNQ mode, which basically then goes ahead and the camera processes your slow motion footage for you, those files are now gonna be 10-bit instead of 8-bit. We're also getting 6K 420 10-bit at 24 and 30 frames per second, which allows then for us to be able to have that open gate format, which then we can use the frame markers on that and be able to shoot one clip and have multiple edit cuts from that clip in varying sizes that we need for social media. Next up is audio. We're gonna get four channels of audio with these cameras when we use the XLR1 adapter. That's gonna give us two XLRs on the adapter. We got the three and a half on the camera itself. And then of course we have the camera microphone, which is gonna give us our scratch audio. Another cool feature that's an industry first that we're getting in this camera is gonna be the real-time LUT. Now this is not something that we've seen in a camera of this class before. And let me explain what that is. We've already had monitoring LUTs that we're able to apply. And when we're pushing out our image to a client monitor, to an external monitor, uh, to the back of the LCD screen, and that's usually we do a Rec. 709 LUT that we use to correct. However, with the real-time LUT capabilities of the camera, I'm actually able to load my correction LUT into the camera and actually bake that into the footage or the photos that I'm shooting and it's already done for me. So in essence, I've saved a step in my post-production process. So for example, I use the Leaming LUTs and I've uploaded a Leaming LUT into this camera and I've shot some footage and then I can take that into my post-production software and step one of my color correction process is already done. We're also able to shoot 30 frames per second in raw bursts and autofocus single and continuous when we're using the electronic shutter. And then that number goes to nine and seven frames per second for autofocus single and continuous when we're using the mechanical shutter. The additional features that we're gonna get with the X version of this camera are gonna be raw video output, 
to the Ninja 5 Plus recorder. That will also be available for the S5 Mark II through a paid firmware update. We're gonna get the all intra codex, we're gonna get ProRes, we're also gonna get the ability to do USB SSD recording. We're also gonna have live view composite mode. That'll also be part of the paid firmware update for the S5 Mark II. And then we will also have the wired and wireless IP streaming, just like we saw with the GH5 Mark II. Let's talk about some of the exterior features of this camera. Now there's not a lot of changes, but there are a few that are worth noting. First off, the camera is gonna be a little bit taller and that's because we have a cooling fan that sits up on top of the camera, right where the Lumix logo is. In fact, you'll see some side vents at the top part of the camera to allow for some cooling. Also, on the back side of the camera, we have an eight-way joystick instead of the four-way joystick. Next up, we've got dual SD card slots. And the main thing to note here is that they're gonna both be UHS-2. And when you get the X version of the camera, that is gonna be the first time you will see an all all black design from Lumix. Everything on the camera is black. The logos are all gonna be black. In fact, on the top of the dials where you see the different um, indications like PA and S and M and so on, all of those are gonna be etched into the dials themselves. So those will also be black. Let's talk about power. This camera is gonna take the same batteries that you use with the S5, so you can definitely use those batteries across the different cameras. And also, this is gonna be USB power delivery and charging in the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. A few small changes in the ergonomics of the camera. Number one, the eye sensor is gonna be at the top of the eye cup area as opposed to being at the bottom. Hopefully that will not cause that to be engaged as often. And then on the shutter button, that's gonna have a slight angle to it, so it's a little bit easier to reach ever so slight of a change there, but then also the backside grip and the front grip are just a little bit more pronounced. They're not really bigger, they're just the indentions on them are more pronounced, making it just easier to hold on to and to grip. I definitely noticed a big difference with that and the camera did feel a little bit more secure in the hand. So those are a lot of new features or improved features that we're getting with the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. Now, there's just a few more features that I wanna cover that are gonna mainly be geared towards the videographers. First off is gonna be the dual native ISO. We're gonna have that, we've already had that, but we still have that in this camera. I'll drop on the screen here, um, on one of these sides, what those dual native ISOs are for the different color profiles. Also, we've had the ability to do shutter angle versus the shutter speed. Well, now we also can set and show gain versus ISO. That's another cool feature that we have that we can customize. And then the next thing is a shear overlay. Now the shear overlay feature, we've had this before and we've used, been able to use that with photography, but now we can use it with videography. So we can take the last frame of a previous shot and we can drop that as a shear overlay onto our, our screen and be able to line up that next shot with that so we can continue that shot or do some kind of special effect or whatever the application may be for that. The sheer overlay function is now available in video as well. All right, so that's a lot of features that are both new and also things that they've improved upon. But the main thing obviously that we've talked about is the phase autofocus such a huge move forward in the Lumix cameras. So now let's talk about price. Now it may surprise some of you, I know that it surprised me, so here we go. The body only for the S5 Mark II is coming in at $19.99. That's $1,999. The X version, the S5 Mark II X, is gonna come in at $21.99, $2,199. Now, as I mentioned before, the links for those are gonna be down below. You can definitely get your pre-orders in now. There are also gonna be three kits available for these cameras. I do not have the pricing for these, so we'll make sure we drop those down below in the description or update that when we have that information. But the three kits are gonna be as follows. There's gonna be a W kit, which is gonna be the body plus the 20 to 60 and the 51.8. Then there's gonna be a K kit that they're gonna call it. That's gonna be the body plus the 20 to 60. And then there will be a C kit and that's gonna be the body plus the 51.8. And that wraps us up. And man, I still cannot believe I'm saying phase autofocus with a Lumix camera, but such exciting news today. As I mentioned before, please place your pre-order down in the links below. Got all that covered. 
Also, we'd love to see you in the store. We've got three locations for you, North Austin, South Austin, and in the Woodlands just outside of Houston. My name is Todd White, and we'll see you on the next video.